We I request everyone to rise as the academic procession is about to enter the hall. Please welcome the academic procession led by the registrar, Dr. O. P. Shukla, who is holding baton, representing DPSRU. The Vice Chancellor, Professor R. K. Goel. The Chairman, Board of Governors, Professor Sridhar Divedi. Members of Board of General Council, Dr. G. N. Singh. Members of Board of Governors, Professor Arun K. Agarwal. Shri Azimul Haq, Director, DTTE. Professor P. K. Sahu. Dean Academics, Professor Geeta Agarwal. Shri Ajay Dadji, member of Academic Council and the faculty members. This baton symbolizes the pillars of healthcare system and also represents the different branches of the university, including School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Delhi Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, School of Allied Health Sciences, School of Physiotherapy and Academy of Sports Sciences Research and Management. I request Academy Council member, faculty member, and also everyone in the hall to kindly take their seats. A very good morning to one and all. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the third annual convocation of Delhi Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research University. Graduation day is the celebration of the harvest of the crops of talent and skills. This is much awaited event in every student life as it gives the returns to the efforts put in by the students throughout their academic endeavor. It gives a sense of achievement and responsibility towards fulfilling further commitments. We welcome guest of honor, Shri Manish Sisodia ji, the honorable chancellor, Shri Anil Vajal ji. May I take the pleasure of welcoming today's chief guest, Professor B. Suresh, President, Pharmacy Council of India, Pro-Chancellor, GSS Academy of Higher Education and Research.
respected dignitaries on and off the dais and guests may I have this privilege to play our university kul geet <laughs> भारत भेषज के वैभव हे विपद हरु हे दिपसरु विपद हरु हे दिपसरु विपद हरु भेषज विज्ञान के कल्पतरु हे दिपसरु भारत भेषज के वैभव हे विपद हरु हे दिपसरु all the respected dignitaries on the dais to please step forward to begin the lamp lighting ceremony shubham karoti kalyanam arogyam dhana sampada shatru buddhi vinashaya deep jyotir namastute But 
you. May I invite Dean Academics, Professor Geeta Agarwal, to begin the process of convocation. I request Honorable Chairman, Board of Governors, to declare the third annual convocation open on behalf of Honorable Chancellor, sir. Please. I, on behalf of the Honorable Chancellor of the University, declare the convocation open. I request the graduating students of PhD, MPharm, MHM, MPH, MBA, BPharm, BPT, BSc Sports Sciences, and DPharm to kindly rise and keep standing or appear on the screen. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, I present to you 97 DPharm students 126 B form, 30 BPT, 51 BSc Sports Science students, 105 PG students, including 77 M form, 11 MBA in Pharmaceutical Management, 9 MPH, 8 MHM students, and 2 PhD students who are candidates for their respective degrees have been examined and found qualified for the said degrees. I pray that the members of General Council and Board of Governors do pass a grace for them and for those who have been permitted to receive their degrees in absentia for their admission to the degrees. by the authority given to me by Honorable Chancellor Sri Anil Bajalji of this university, I admit you all to the degrees for which you have qualified and I charge you that ever in your life and conversation you prove yourself worthy of the same. I admit other candidates also for the degree in absentia. I congratulate you and Thank you. I request Professor Geeta Agarwal to announce the names of PhD awardees. Today is a very special day as university is going to award first two PhD degrees. For this, I would like to request Honorable Vice Chancellor and Honorable Chairman Board of Governors to come forward to award the degrees. I also request all the dignitaries, general council members and BOG members to come forward. Now, I call upon stage Abhishek Singh to get the PhD degree from our Honorable Vice Chancellor and Honorable Chairman Board of Governors in the presence of General Counsel, Board of Governors members and Professor B. Suresh, our Chief Guest. Congratulations. Now I call upon stage Mohammed Mazahar to get his degree from the dignitaries. Congratulations to both of you. 
being the first two doctorate of the university. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. May I now request the registrar to declare the degrees to be conferred today? I declare that at the third annual convocation of Delhi Forum Statistical Science and Research University of Delhi, the following degrees have been conferred today. Doctor of Philosophy, PhD in Pharmaceutical Science, Masters in Pharmacy in two specialization, Masters in Business Administration in Pharmaceutical Management, Master in Public Health, Master in Hospital Management, Bachelors in Pharmacy, Bachelors in Physiotherapy, Bachelors in Science in Sports Science, Diploma in Pharmacy, D Pharma. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Now I request Honorable Vice Chancellor to give welcome address and presence the accomplishments of the university. Distinguished members on the dais, dignitaries present online graduating students, pride parents, my faculty colleagues, no. staff members, no, no, no. invited guests, donors of various medals, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the most auspicious day, not only in India, or not only in the world, but in the entire universe. It is solstice day right now in India when this program is going on. It is the day and the time when sun has reached its highest point in the sky at midway at the North Pole during its journey across the sky. This is the time when university is giving, universe is giving <laughs> late down, early dusk, the shortest day of the year and the longest night. Yes, it is a solstice day that happens at the same time for all of us. Everywhere on the earth, no matter where you live on the earth globe, no matter what time the solstice happens, because it has begun at the midnight of uh, last midnight, it happens, but it is a signal to celebrate. What a wonderful day to our university. When in some part of the world, like in Southern America, 
it is the new year day or the noise day or the noise festival starting the christmas in many parts of the world from australia to north america and in asia waiting for what we call makar sakranti and so on in last two convocations it was a privilege for me to announce certain achievements which just got received at the last moment today also i am fortunate to have the such i will begin today with some good news of the university that have been received in last week only couple of days dr mahavir got the common wealth fellowship from the uk dr shushma talegaonkar got a research grant of 67 lakhs from serb dst and our team of pharmacologist got 5.45 crores from our own department of technical education for the establishment of precision medicine and pharmacy center which is going to be the first of its kind in india this is grant of 67 lakhs be found not very please everyone switch off the camera likha hua first of its kind of herbal formulation while whole world is going towards vaccination or other modalities our university prepared with the help of the jami pharmaceuticals chennai a formulation directly modulating ac2 activity and going to be the first type of treatment probably in the world let time will say and the clinical trials going on in bangalore are the latest report is that they are really encouraging with these exciting note i take this pleasure to welcome the chief guest our well wisher and a personality a doyen and the architect of current practices in academics profession research of the pharmacy council of india the pro vice chancellor of jss medical education and research professor bhojraj suresh ji sir our beloved mentor philosopher and guide of the university honorable chancellor ji shri anil bajal ji has conveyed our the best wishes of for the conference and authorized me to give to perform certain functions similarly our guest of honor deputy chief minister of delhi state a very hard working education minister with positive and enthusiastic thinking for the universities sri manish shishodya ji has to attend some important meeting at the last moment and express his best wishes i am obliged to dr g n singh the member of the general council professor sri dwedar uh, sri dr dwedi ji the chairman of board of governors other members of board of governors our well wisher mla sri ajay dad ji who is always praying the greater heights for the university who in spite of all these in the covid time they have come and attending this function in presence of course others have joined online i wish to express heartiest congratulations to all the graduating students their parents staff members and invited guests to remain present and listening to these achievements you are all the stakeholders of the university may divine sun as i told it is a universal day and the planets of the universe continue to shower the blessings to us and to our university the founder vice chancellor professor ss agrawal is also present and i am sure he must be feeling good to see the heights we are trying to achieve to begin with i would like to congratulate first two doctorate the first batch of the bpt and bsc sports sciences the two batches of 
diploma in pharmacy again this is the first university when the diploma in pharmacy students are also being honored and the third batch of the postgraduate students getting mpharm mba mph mhm and the other graduate from the first and the only pharmacy university in the country delhi pharmaceutical sciences and research university honorable chancellor sri anil bajal ji directed us to be in touch with various biodiversities of delhi in, and also the andaman and nicobars we did that and we identified various herbs as i mentioned in the beginning based on that through jammi pharmaceuticals we have come up with the formulation the trials are showing really encouraging results and mm -hmm. hope that our university name will be figured in time to come right from the day the covid started the cases started and the up till kerala it was delhi who got the first two cases we became active from the day one to fight against this pandemic we never knew that some of our earlier research work and the innovations are going to be useful during this period the masks we prepared about one and a half years back before the covid started and it was now they are there hand sanitizers eco friendly anti infective the drug the chemical hocl with the help of drdo they are some of the product which really became an asset during these days further the last being when the vaccination was announced vaccination program is announced the first and foremost need was the cold chain transfer transport one of our faculty dr geeta agrawal prepared that about one and a half years back the validated cold chain uh, uh, cold chain transportation facility and the research with the out of research we are happy to say that they are all going to pay the dividends research innovation and incubation have been a priority of our university this year we filed eight patents two pcts and i am happy to share that in collaboration with russian scientists we have filed patent for re, for the diabetic foot ulcer the regenerin two of our faculties as i mentioned got dr sushma talegaukar and dr prabhod chandar are listed in the top 2% of this sci most cited scientists of 2019 and in addition i was privileged to be in the list of top 2% scientists announced by this university of stanford in the country and that is all important because with the new entrant we are going to add many more such laurels our university this year has been shortlisted by silicon india of course it may be a small gain but in the 10 best campuses for research and innovation in india 2020 with more than 25 new dynamic faculty joining already they have joined many of them on the regular basis i am sure the research excellence will emerge and it is apparent from the fact of the just last month when there is a covid period there is no compulsion from my side or from our authorities that they have to be there in the university and do the work but are more than 10 research projects have been submitted by various faculty members that itself speaks bolte na poot ke pair palne mein dikhte hain this is what i am expecting from all our faculty members to do and contribute while the first batch of bpt is coming out this year this is the first batch from the university it is exciting to note that our school of physiotherapy has been included in 10 best physiotherapy institutes in india this is another landmark which has started right from that and i am sure our graduates 
coming out from the, the school of physiotherapy are going to take pride of it. Our school of physiotherapy, under the leadership of Professor Arun Agrawal, our Board of Governor member, has taken another initiative with Dr. Shilpa Jain to initiate bringing various councils of India together and evolving the high standard syllabus and the practices in physiotherapy. Similarly, in just a five-year-old allied school of allied health sciences, under the leadership of Dr. Jasira, produced outstanding work exhibiting that case fatality ratio of COVID is dependent on the uses of traditional medicine. This is again first time we could show, and the paper is under the process. Yes, the faculty is in dialogue with the Ministry of the Health and Family Welfare for a joint collaboration and efforts to contribute from the university side to this venture. Our board of governor members in the recent meetings, they directed us to establish the Center of Excellence for Infectious Disease Research and Training. This is again going to be uh, another landmark and another contributions toward the society. Yet another feature of our university is Academy of Sports Sciences and Management. We had this year webinar with Olympic Education Committee of Indian Olympic Association for Olympism and Olympic Education for 21st century. We are likely to take it further and over 1,000 teachers from schools have the training for sports digitalization, sports fitness, and how to apply at the school level. With the academy, we could complete the second batch of the WCSC, World Class Skill Center. And this year onward, we are planning to have some more courses, more certificate courses, which are relevant, including, of course, we have these courses in the sports sciences and beauty and wellness. So we are continuing, and we will make listen in the next convocation that how we have <laughs> arranging the guest lectures appointing the adjunct professors organizing workshops national and international conferences and now the webinars have been the regular features and they are still continuing through webinars our university had developed more collaboration internationally and tie-ups with countries like uk West Indies, Portugal, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, and China. The formulation work has resulted because of the collaboration with the University of Missouri, USA, USA where the direct work was done for our extract, for our formulation on the virus, actual virus and the enzyme. That is what is the important thing. And this year, we initiated postgraduate diploma in clinical research with the Apollo Hospital Research Foundation. With CDSCO, we are planning to start PG programs in the drug regulatory sciences and with Indian Pharmacopoeial Commission, we started research in the material vigilance project. My compliments to Dr. Munakshi, Dr. Mukesh for some initiatives they have taken. This year, we also prepared Vision 2030, which encompasses how we are going to go further in 2025, 2030, and then 2040. This is what is the stepwise vision we are preparing. And I'm sure with Dr. O.P. Shokla joining as the registrar, things will be really changing. And needless to say, our director, Sri Ajimal Hugs, and Achha. our secretary, Achha. Sri Rajesh Prasad ji, they are always supportive in all our endeavors. Lastly, I will take a minute to even touch upon the student activities and their achievements. This year, again, close to 50 students got qualified in the national GPAT examination, which I suppose is the highest in the probably the country. 
and this is continuing for last couple of years we are seeing that number is very high further with the mentorship of dr swaminathan dr rajiv our student reached to the regional round or the semi final round of the aict chhatra vishwakarma award competition several state and national awards if i start talking it will be too much but several state and national level awards have been backed by our students through six extracurricular societies these are the societies formed by the student managed by the student and for the students these societies are for different extracurricular activities they include raga for raga society for music akruti for arts malan for dance fitur for dramatics varve for literature and paridrashti for the photography my congratulations to all the students who got the awards through various extracurricular activities also dear graduate students feel proud to be part of our university feel proud and be in touch with us i am sure our your association with the university will be sustainable and lifelong getting this university gain the real international status i will end we are knowing that we are passing through a very terrible time of covid but to me woods are lovely dark and deep a miles i go before i sleep a miles i have to go before i sleep thank you one and all thank you sir may i again request honorable vice chancellor to introduce today's chief guest professor b suresh president pharmacy council of india and welcome him to deliver the convocation address yeah ladies and gentlemen it is a really exciting moment because the chief guest of the function who needs no introduction to this crowd and probably to the india associated in somewhere or other to the medical in pharmacy education and they all know professor b suresh and i have a pleasure to introduce him and i am honored you uh, i am honored sir to have you as our chief guest this is the personality in the field known not only in india but also across the world he is currently the pro chancellor of jss academy of higher education and research in mysuru now i am touched by this jss a h e r i am naming it little different for today today is there is another auspicious event that has occurred after 800 years jupiter and saturn they are in one align this is the rarest event which has occurred in the universe again so to me it is a jupiter and so jss a h e r is jupiter and saturn stars aligning humanity and education and research so this is the jss a h r e professor suresh has made a history in the pharmacy profession for not only being elected as the president of of the pharmacy council of india fourth time serving more than 17 years probably the longest and will remain the longest but that is not important more important is the changes which he has brought in this period the changes through the government through various gadgets through various regulations i can go on listing but to me very important the regulation for the par pharmacy practice which was not there the regulation for farm d which is again a landmark and some of the areas like m farm was never touched the postgraduate was never touched 
and all these regulations have been brought in by under the dynamic leadership of Dr. B. Shuraiz. This is what our all pharmacy professionals should take pride of it. And in this period, the problems with the ICT or anything has been amicably resolved by him, whether it was to fight with the government or to the court of law or anything. Yes, the profession of pharmacy remained on the top. At the university level, JSS Academy <laughs> has been, again, very dynamic. And this dynamism is, has come because of Professor B. Suresh getting the top ranking in the state. It is a very new academy and new university, but getting the first rank within the state in a very short time, getting A plus grade with the CGPA of the 3.48, close to A plus plus at the national level, and figuring in the top 500 universities of the world. This is what is Professor B. Shuresh and his work. Internationally, Professor Suresh is recipient of FAPA, Isidate Award, De Costa, Honorary De Costa from the Iberia's University, and the member of the US Pharmacopoeia and ACP International Service Commission USA. And he is the executive member of the Commonwealth Pharmaceutical Association. Sir, such a gigantic personality present to our convocation is really a pride to this university. And we welcome and I request you to deliver your convocation address. Dr. Bishra is please. The respected Sri Anil Bejoji, the Honorable Chancellor of Delhi Pharmaceutical Sciences Research University, Delhi. Sri Manish Sisodia Ji, the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Government of NCT, Delhi. My well wisher and a very passionate and good friend, Professor Ramesh Goyal, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Delhi Pharmaceutical Sciences. Uh, research University, Professor Sridhar Divedi Ji, the Chairman of Board of Governors, of the Board of Governors, members of the Governing Council, officers of the University, deans, professors, and the faculty of the University, and uh, my good friend Dr. G. N. Singh and Sri S. L. Nasaji, who I see are present in the uh, in the convocation in person, proud parents and young graduates, member of the electronic, visual and print media, distinguished guests, invitees, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank Professor Ramesh Goyalji for his kind words of introduction and uh, also speaking so well and high about me. I have been only a humble servant of the profession and uh, also a soldier of education activities in the country. I feel pride in doing what I have done and would like to continue to do so with the blessings and support from all my colleagues. At the outset, I would like to extend greetings and best wishes to all of you. And uh, I thank the Vice Chancellor for inviting me to deliver the convocation address at this third convocation of the uh, Delhi Pharmaceutical Sciences Research and University Delhi. Actually, he had invited me on two earlier occasions also to come and be present for the convocation. But due to various commitments, I could not be there. This year, I was hopeful that I would be present in person and participate in this very important occasion. But I think the pandemic has kept us all away. And hence, this has to be a virtual meet where we are looking at the young graduates receiving their degrees and awards today. So let me start off by congratulating the parents and the 
parents of the graduating students and convey my appreciation for their noble involvement, support, and contribution for shaping the success of their children because they would have undergone lots of sacrifices to see that their children have reached this day where they are graduating as students and moving into this world. Next, I would like to also congratulate my dear young gallant graduates. You all are today qualifying with various qualifications which you had pursued and you will be having a scroll or a degree with you at the end of this convocation, which makes you a registered graduate of the profession you have chosen to pursue in your path. But universities are not meant only to award degrees. They are expected to equip you with all the life skills that you will need to succeed in your future. In this journey, the staff would have inspired you, enthused you, motivated you, and rewarded you. And the same way your parents would have supported, cajoled, and persuaded you to see that you succeed in your life, not only in getting the set of qualifications which you are getting, but also to come out a very confident individual who is going to realize his own dreams and ambitions and also help the nation develop. So congratulations to all the students uh, who have successfully graduating today. I would also like to congratulate the outstanding young students who are going to get the awards and medals uh, just after this speech. Uh, congratulations to you, your excellence and uh, your, uh, your, uh, your efforts to achieve success at the highest level is something admirable. And I'm sure this is going to keep you pushing towards excellence wherever you go in your life. Like our Honorable Vice Chancellor, while expressing uh, the, his report, he expressed that these are challenging times. Perhaps these six months which we have gone through have been not only challenging time for us, but perhaps in, the, in this whole century, it will be recorded as the six months that no one who will forget and all the history would document the challenge which the world went through and uh, the type of political and administrative upheavals that happened. There were collapse of businesses, there were regulatory modifications, unemployment, possible economic recession which we are facing, and disruption to education, uncertainty of progression, and unimaginable interruptions. All these are just because of one single situation which the world had never seen before, a health pandemic of coronavirus. Now, this pandemic would have been much bigger disaster to all of us, but for the leadership which the world gave at this time. This was first time perhaps the whole world came together to say that we will fight this war together and save the lives of our people. There were no countries, there were no borders, there were no languages that came in the way, but everyone put the effort to see that how each other's knowledge, research, science, support, regulatory systems can help the world to survive this pandemic. And they all worked hard to mitigate this crisis and also now perhaps uh, working to avoid the re-emerging of the disease, which we all are being threatened with the new coronavirus being identified at London. And the worry is whether this is going to spread to other countries also. Already nations are taking steps that this type of challenge does not, uh, uh, does not come again. And during this journey, we felt that whatever... Aapne kis kis were, aapne kis hai, wo we, and during this time, what we could see was that those who felt there will be certain things will not be acceptable, certain things will not be possible, and this type of change will never happen in the world. This was the opinion many had, but they all became possible, acceptable, doable, just because of one pandemic which we faced, which has kept us remembering what we have to do. The pre-millennial generation, that means those who were born earlier to the 2000, had very strong views on technology influencing the, uh, the world. And they have always resisted the technology playing a part of their lives. But the millennial generation, which was attached to all the technology, be it the mobile phones or the various apps, uh, they made them, profile, made them feel wrong by showing that technology has come in 
and they all have to adapt and move forward. And this is the change, big change that has come. Higher education was not an exception to this. When the pandemic struck and nobody knew what is going to happen, well, they all felt that the classes will be suspended for a few days and it will be a passing cloud and we all will be back to the colleges. Then the lockdown came, then the extended lockdown came and uh, the worry was how the education is going to continue and how the children are going to graduate on time. So this was the biggest concern before the higher education system. So the higher education system did not just wait. I'm, I mean, our higher education system is so huge in our country compared to others. We have 1.3 billion population. We have got 1,000 universities offering various programs. There are 50,000 higher education institutions, the colleges and the, the, the different types of education institutions that are existing. And we have got more than 30 million students studying only higher education uh, across, the, across the country. So for all of them, the need was to cater and provide this education. So what did the educational institutions or the education system do? It responded very fast, adapted swiftly, and innovated with courage and moved on. The what became the online classes and webinars and meetings all have been well accepted. In fact, in some places, it was amazingly seen. The students were more attentive and attending fully in the online class rather than they would have attended in the physical classes that has happened. Even the regulatory bodies, be it the UGC, the Pharmacy Council of India, and the Ministry of HRD, they all moved swiftly and brought out the regulations that are favoring the students' career and progression. And I can say proudly that Pharmacy Council of India was one of the regulatory bodies which gave, even as early as March, a very clear guidance that how the academic progression will take place and the examinations will be conducted. And uh, after that, we have never had to had even amend a single word which you have put because that regulation which was brought in or the advisory that was brought in had kept the vision where the, the education is going to progress and see that the students benefit from this at one large level. Now, these are the challenges which the education has faced so far. But what is going to happen in future? Are we going to go back to normal? Will the students come back to classes? Will the teachers feel comfortable coming back to universities and teaching? Or they got used to the comfort of teaching from home and students got comfort to, from learning from home? Are they going to look at education uh, institutions reopening and come back to the classes with same enthusiasm? Or they prefer the online and education they were doing? I think this is something we will have to wait and watch. And But there will definitely be an impacted change that we are looking at. Similarly, what will happen to the research in the universities? Because if the students and research scholars are not going to be present at universities, if teachers are not going to be at universities uh, to the level which they were existing before, how the research is going to be impacted with this? And uh, it will all be a big challenge for us, including the evaluation system, which we are used to so far only through the physical methods of evaluation and examinations. Now we have to look at integrity and in the online examinations and really assess the students' competencies and move forward. And the merely the marks may not determine the knowledge which the student which has acquired in the process. I think these are some of the challenges that are going to be in front of us. And we have to realize with, which is going to win, whether the technology is going to win over the good human resource or the good human resource is going to use technology to its advantage. I think this is something which we will be working and moving forward in the coming years. Now, what is the way forward? What is going to happen if these uh, challenges are going to continue? I think we have to realize that blended education will be something which is going to stay. That means students would come to the classes, but the preferred mode of teaching may continue to be online where students can learn at their own pace and convenience besides being in the physical classes. So this type of blended education will happen. The remote faculty would be a something which will be reality. We may have faculty teaching from different parts of the world, but not to all, this, all the full subject, but some part of the subject, some topics would now become a reality of being teaching from different parts of the world to the students. Digital resources will be a part of our education. So more than prescribing textbooks, we would be looking at what learning management systems are going to be there, what e-books will be available, what e-journals will be available, 
as resources to the students to uh, help them to move forward. And uh, perhaps uh, what we are, are waiting is for the catalyst, the vaccine, to come forward and help us go back to the normal level. Is it going to happen? Let us have a look at what is happening in the vaccine world, uh, which we have been so eagerly waiting to look forward. We all are aware that the vaccine across the world is undergoing at different phases of trials. What I understand latest is that uh, there are 170 vaccines that are being explored in various laboratories in experiments and in animal models, which is there. 20 vaccines are undergoing safety tests in healthy young individuals. 12 vaccines are being tested in broader groups of individuals. That means phase two trials and 10 vaccines have gone into international trials. That is phase three trials and people are waiting for the vaccine to come out. And we, as we all know, two vaccines have been approved and uh, licensed for general use in certain countries. In India, we are, of course, waiting for the clearance of the regulatory system for making the vaccine available to the people of our country. Now, this is the status with which the uh, vaccine is progressing. One thing amazing in this vaccine development, which we should try to understand is uh, that this challenge of pandemic has brought in collaborations which were never heard of before. And these collaborations between the industry and the academia, the collaborations between the government and the industry, the collaboration between the uh, philanthropic organizations and the industry and the countries, all these things have become such a dynamic possibility now that uh, it has showed a new way of working. And uh, perhaps the vaccine, when it comes, I think is going to uh, give us the type of confidence that we can move on with our life. And at the same time, it is going to show us how we can work together to achieve greater success. You all are aware that developing a drug or a vaccine for that matter is going to is about a five to six years of effort and billions of dollars of investment to go in. But today we are trying to have a vaccine within nine months. And how is it possible? Because purely it was because of the collaboration and the determination with which all the scientists, all the industries, all the governments, all collaborators came together to see that this should be achieved. And uh, here is where the leadership did matter. And uh, leadership is something which is very, very important. As young graduates, when you are going to go out, you have to look at this, this change environment and try to give your own leadership in a way where you can. You may be start just in the first step of your life, but in your journey as you move forward, your leadership, whether it is taking care of your patients, whether it is taking care of your colleagues in the industry, whether it is manufacturing life-saving medicines or dispensing medicines over the counter in the hospitals or in community pharmacy. You have to be a leader in your own right. Mm -hmm. I recall here uh, the quote made by uh, John Quincy Adams. He says, if your action inspires others to dream more, to learn more, do more and become more, you are a leader. So it is your actions. Are you going to inspire others? Are you going to dream more and make others also dream? Are you going to learn more and make that knowledge available to the people? Are you going to do more and make see that the outcomes of your research and ac academic activities are beneficial to the people? And if you all do that, then you are indeed a true leader. And I think uh, this type of inspirational leadership is what the world is looking for in these challenging times. So try to be evolved about the leadership uh, which I just mentioned to you a few minutes before. Now, our, our respected Vice Chancellor also did mention about how important role the DIPSRU has made in uh, research. And he emphasized that some of the natural and medicines which he has been exploring has been very helpful and trials are going on which may benefit the people. I think this is where the future lies. And this is where the universities have to function. This is how the universities have to function. Universities should become more responsible towards research that is going to benefit the society rather than pure academic research, which just lies as thesis in the libraries. I think this is some effort which all of us are have to understand and move forward. I know today graduates are coming or passing out from different disciplines. Some are graduating in sports medicine, some are graduating from 
physiotherapy, but large number are from pharma. So please uh, uh, excuse me for my tone on pharma industry or pharma sector alone a little bit. It's not that others are not uh, <coughs> not going to have similar path, but I think the path remains the same, whichever sector we are uh, talking about. Today, if you look at the pharma industry, it is all set to move to the next level. They are going to the stage where I had an interaction with the industry recently, uh, industry leadership. They mentioned by 2030, industries are going to go to the mode, what they call as lights down mode. That means you would not require any lighting in the industry because all processes would be automated and the human intervention is going to be minimal. If this is going to be the future, then how are we preparing our graduates to that? Are they a part of this automation? Are they having the knowledge and, and the skills to move on with the roles which we are talking about? And this is where the pharma sector is moving. <coughs> and it is important for us that we equip our students to achieve this, uh, uh, this type of knowledge and skills where they can respond. So not only is the subject matter, but give them the skills which they can go to the industry, learn to continue, um, continue to learn and also be able to adapt with the change and bring in innovations in the industry. I think when we are talking about the change that the industry is doing, I think uh, it is important that the pharmacy or education also undergoes the similar change. Otherwise, there will be a big gap between the industry and the education system. And this will be affecting the students who may be passing out. So the Pharmacy Council of India is already aware of this challenge and has in working with the closely with the industry and looking at the curriculum which presently is there at the B form and M form courses. And perhaps in six months time, when we look at the next academic year, 21-22, you will have a brand new curriculum, which will be industry driven in the sense, we look at that at least one semester, which the students do at the undergraduate or postgraduate, they spend that time at the industry where they can get some hands-on experience. So these are some of the thoughts which we are we have to look at the growth of the pharma sector and the emerging technologies that are there, be it personalized medicine, be it genomics, be it nanotechnology, and uh, <coughs> to be a part of the industry's uh, uh, way of functioning. And this is not going to be science fiction anymore. These will become science facts. And we all have to be prepared and train our students to achieve this. Now, if you look at the industry itself, the pharma sector industry itself, earlier we used to see the industry competing with each other. There was to be cutthroat competition. If one industry is developing a molecule and it will patent it and see that that patented molecule is not available uh, to the other industries at least 30, 40 years. So this is how they were functioning. But that model has changed. I just mentioned a few minutes before that today they are collaborating. They are looking at businesses, how two or three big industries together can work and achieve a better outcome. So this is the approach that is happening at the uh, <coughs> global level. So this type of new roles is looking at big pharma continuing to play an important role. While this innovate and bring out some new ideas, scale up, I think you will have to go to the big pharma and the <coughs> and the world leaders are realizing this and that is why we find world leaders talking directly to the big pharma and making sure that the vaccines are available to the people at the lowest cost at the affordable rates and make available at all places across the uh, country and the world so this is how the pharma sector itself has reimagined and redefined its growth now will this type of collaboration happen in education I think it is something for us to sit and uh, understand. Can two universities collaborate together to teach the larger number of students rather than preparing a curriculum and trying to see that it is going to teach only to its students? Can a hyper collaboration take place in academic systems? Can hyper collaboration take place in the research activities in the universities? So these type of thoughts is something is what is required and then only the Indian education and particularly the pharmacy education, which we are talking about, can reach the next level of growth. <coughs> and uh, I would like to say here that uh, the other graduates like the physiotherapy, the sports medicine, the other science degrees, all these things are going to have similar challenges which we have seen. 
I would like to go on and speaking about it, but I know there is a time constraint. So I would like to conclude by saying that once again, my dear young graduates, congratulations to all of you. I wish you the best of best in your careers. People say that you can learn by trial and error, but let me remind you, trial is costly and error is deadly. No organization worth its metal will accept this approach. We know that we don't have to know that when the red light is on the street, it is dangerous to walk on the cross the street. So you don't need experience for that. It is understood when there is a red light on. I think same way it is something for us. We have to wait and learn by experience and go on waiting. Then I think the time would have lapsed and you would be living somebody else's life trying to modify. It's time for you to move on with life, face challenges with great uh, <clears throat> great enthusiasm energy you are young you have got nothing to lose so be confident this is what i would like to uh, mention here here i would like to quote again uh, steve jobs who told at a convocation address that your time is limited so don't waste it living someone else's life don't let the noise of others opinions drown out your own inner voice and most important have the courage to follow your heart and intuition so I would like to tell you, my young students, that you have to think what is the way you would like to take your life forward and how you are going to achieve that success which is there. You should dream now for a success. And what is that dream? Write it down and keep pursuing it. There will be challenges. There will be uh, the hurdles in your way. But it is only the resilient who would come out successful in their life and move forward. Try to have that courage. Similarly, Dr. Kalam also in his message to youth, he said, I quote, my message especially to young people is to have courage to think differently, courage to invent, to travel the unexpected path, courage to discover the impossible and to conquer the problems and succeed. These are great qualities and they must and we all should work towards that. I think this is again, we don't have a greater message than what Dr. Kalam said. So. I would like you to say that while you are celebrating your graduation, it is also important to acknowledge that you are making a new beginning, a next chapter in your life which you are going to emb embark on. With these degrees, you are going to have a greater responsibility. People will seek your opinion. They will refer to your knowledge for answers. Look at your actions for guidance. And most of all, trust your expertise with their lives because you are in their health profession. So you should imagine people are trusting you with their lives because they feel that you are the expert and you are going to save them. But remember to lead your own life with courage, with dignity and humility. So I wish you all the very best in your careers and future endeavors. I thank you once again. Thank you to our respected Vice Chancellor Professor Goyal for inviting me. I wish you all a very safe and uh, uh, a, a very happy new year coming and let the new year uh, bring all happiness to all of us around us. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I request respected Vice Chancellor to read Honorable Chancellor Shri Anil Bajalji presidential address. Respected Professor Sureshji, I am sure if Anil Bajaljai was here, he would have given the standing ovation. And if our chairman, BOG, and Board of Governors allow me, I request to give a standing ovation to Professor B. Suresh for giving such a wonderful we are really thankful to you, sir, for giving this wonderful message, not only to our teachers, to students, but also to the society in general. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I have a pleasure now to read the message, the speech, the presidential speech, our Honorable Chancellor, Lieutenant Governor, Sri Anil Bajalji has given to The voice is mine, but the words are that of 
our chancellor. Honorable Chief Guest, Professor B. Suresh, Vice Chancellor, the members of the General Council, Academic Council, the members of Board of Governors, Board of Studies, distinguished guests, graduating students, medal and degree recipients, and our gifted students and invited guests. I'm honored to be the part of the third convocation of Delhi Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research University. I congratulate you, all, all the graduates of the year 2020 from Delhi Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research University, the India's first university dedicated to pharmaceutical and health sciences for crossing an important milestone of their life in education. At the third convocation, 408 students, including 120 farm, 30 BPT, 51 BSc Honours in Sports Sciences, 106 postgraduates, out of which 28 of MHM, MPH, MBA, and 78 MPharm, and 97 DPharm, and two PhD students are being awarded degrees. The present time of COVID-19 pandemic is tough and challenging, but challenges always bring opportunities. Pharmaceutical and allied health sciences are acting as the world's savior in this time of global health challenge. This is the most opportune time for pharma to promote and execute the domestic manufacturing of APIs the, and essential and critical drugs and vaccination. Also, the industry is now moving towards an institutional mechanism to work in synergy with the departments such as IT, environment, forests, and biotechnology. I am happy to inform you that in a span of five years, TPSRU has grown not only in terms of size, but also attained high standards of academic excellence, particularly in research, innovation, and incubation. This year, university filed eight patents, including two PCTs, in collaboration with Russian scientists, DPCRU has filed a PCT for the regenerating cream for diabetic foot ulcer. Two members of the faculty, Dr. Shushma Talegaukar and Dr. Prabodh Chandar, are listed in top 2% of these highly cited scientists of 2019 by the University of Stanford, in addition to the Vice Chancellor being in the list of top 2% scientists on the year 2020. I'm happy to note that DPSR University has contributed significantly right from the beginning in the COVID fight again. It, is, it has undertaken developments of special masks, sanitizers, and low-cost ventilators besides public awareness programs. It is heartening to note that exploring the Arabili Hills biodiversity daily, DPSRU is in the process of developing the first of its kind of a herbal population to fight COVID-19. As informed by the Vice Chancellor, it is showing encouraging results in the clinical trials. I wish the project a grand success. DPSRU has also come up with a strong industry academic interactions by facilitating to and fro movements of the scientists between industry and academic institutions. DPSRU has recently undertaken an initiative project for cold chain transportation headed by Dr. Gita Agrawal, which has passed the invitation from Japanese from Takeda, and it is a pride that 
DPSRU has been shortlisted by Silicon India for 10 best campuses for research and innovation India 2020. It is also a matter of pride that the School of Physiotherapy of DPSRU has been included in 10 best physiotherapy institutions in India. I'm happy to note that DPSRU has planned to establish the Center of Excellence for Infectious Diseases Research and Training. It is heartening to note and to inform that many faculty members have brought laurels to the university through their dedication and hard work. Dr. Mahabir, Associated Professor of Pharmacognosy, got the Commonwealth Fellowship from UK for Infectious Diseases. Dr. Shushma Talek Aukar, Associate Professor in Pharmaceutics, got the research grant of 67 lakhs from SCRB, Department of Science and Technology, Delhi. The team of pharmacology got a grant of 5.4 crores from TTE for establishing the Precision Medicine Center. On the academic front, DPSR University continues to collaborate with institutions and pharma industry. The latest being the University of Missouri, USA. It plans to develop future technologies such as nutraceuticals, medical devices, and molecular and genomic diagnostics. It is also preparing for reorientation of community-based pharmacy programs, including pharmacovigilance, pharmacoeconomics, and consultant pharmacy concept for diseases like diabetes, cancer, neurological, and cardiovascular diseases. Finally, I am happy to share that the university has prepared a strategic document, Vision 2030, for qualitative and quantitative expansion. I would like to assure continued support to the university. I hope that the graduates will stay connected with the university and would contribute to its growth and development by building a strong alumni network. I wish all the graduates the very best in their future endeavors. Thank you. This is our Anil Bajaldi's thank you. Thank you, and I also welcome our one of the, uh, the vice chancellor and the and the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request the registrar to announce the names of students receiving gold medal and also invite Honorable Vice Chancellor and Chairman Board of Governors to give away the gold medals to avoid the. I invite Vice Chancellor and Chairman Board of Governors uh, to give the medals. I am announcing the medals and name of the students. The Sita Ram Jindal Gold Medal, Miss Pallavi Goel. This is awarded to the student who has passed university examination of the first attempts with the first class obtaining the highest number of marks in B Pharma. Next one is uh, the Sita Ram Jindal gold medal goes to Miss Priyanka. This is awarded to the student who has passed university examination at the first attempt with the first class obtaining the highest number of marks in BPT, Bachelor's in Physiotherapy.
Next one is the Vice Chancellor Award. The Vice Chancellor Award goes to Mr. Hitesi Khattar. This is awarded to the students who has passed university, university examination at the first attempt with the first class, obtaining the highest number of marks in BSc Sports Science. Sorry, the name is Miss Hitesi Khattar. Next one is the Vijayan Alenki gold medal goes to Mr. Rohan Agrawal. This is awarded to the students who has passed university examination at the first attempts with the first class obtaining the highest number of marks in M Pharma all disciplines. Next is the ML Pharmaceuticals Award goes to Miss Mugda Case. This is awarded to the students who has passed university examination at the first attempts with the first class obtaining the highest number of marks in PG programs of Allied Health Sciences, MBA, MPH, MHM. Uh, next, uh, Professor S.K. Gupta gold medal goes to Miss Khusbu. She is online, she is not present in person. This is awarded to the students who has passed university examination at the first attempts with the first class, obtaining the highest number of marks M Pharma examination with clinical research as the specialization. Next, the V.D. Miglani Award and SL NASA Hospital Pharmacy Foundation Award goes to Ms. Kavita Meena. This is awarded to the students who have passed university examination at the first attempts with the first class obtaining the highest number of marks M Pharma examination with hospital pharmacy as the specialization. Next one is the ML Pharmaceuticals Award goes to Miss Charu Jewel. She is online, she is not present here. This is awarded to the students who has passed university examination at the first attempts with the first class obtaining the highest number of marks in D Pharma. Next one is the, the Vice Chancellor Award goes to Mr. Abhay Pathak. This is awarded to the students who has passed university examination at the first attempts with the first class obtaining the highest number of marks in D Pharma. The LG Trophy Award for the best 2021 goes to Mr. Yas Verma. And LG Trophy Award for the best 201920 goes to Ms. Sveta Mittal. This is given to the best 
outgoing students of the batch in B pharma of the respective year considering overall performance in academic, extracurricular and co-curricular activities. The last one is the Jawalat Alenki gold medal goes to Brajkos Industries Private Limited. Uh, uh, they are online, I think, to the startup company of Depsaru Innovation and Incubation Foundation for developing out, outstanding innovative. Thank you. I think we have some. Uh, uh, Isaac, uh, please come. Thank you. I request Professor Harvinder Popley to felicitate Mrs. Shakuntala Goel, Hi. madam. Hello, my Now I request Professor Rajiv Khan to felicitate Professor S. L. Masa. Thank you. May I request the registrar to propose vote of thanks? It is my great honor and privilege to prepare the vote of thanks, to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. Honorable Lieutenant Chancellor of the University of Honorable Honor, Deputy Chief Minister and Minister for Training and Technical Education, Sri Anish Sudhya Ji. Our esteemed Chief Guest, Professor B. Suresh, President, Pharmacy Council of India, and Pro-Chancellor, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, Basuri. Respected Chairman, Board of Governors, Dr. Sridhar Devedi Ji. Honorable uh, MLA, Sri Ajay Dutt Ji. Our Principal Secretary, Technical Education, Sri Rajesh Prasad Ji. Director, Sri Ajimul Haq Ji. Professor S.S. Agrawal, former Vice Chancellor of the University. And our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Ramesh Goel Ji. Member of General Council, BOG Academic Council, distinguished, distinguished guests, deans, professors, faculty, and most importantly, 
our dear graduates and their parents who have joined us online. I, on the behalf of Delhi Pharmaceutical Science and Research University, and on my own behalf, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our Chancellor Sri Anil Bajalji for giving consent to organize convocation and supporting the university in all front. I extend my heartfelt thanks to our dynamic Deputy Chief Minister, Sri Manish Sisodia ji, for accepting the challenge as revolution in education and being a real mentor for the university. I profusely thank you, thank our chief guest, Professor B. Suresh, for accepting our invitation to grace, to grace this day with his presence. Sir, your convocation address was insightful and one that inspired us. We shall cherish this day with you long after the convocation is over. I extend my sincere gratitude to Chairman Bioji for guiding the vision of the university. My gratitude to all members of General Council, BOG, Academic Council, for their support, which has always been forthcoming. I extend my sincere thanks to Principal Secretary Technical Education, Director of Technical Education, and Honorable MLA, Sri Ajay Dadji. My special thanks to the Vice Chancellor for his dynamic leadership on administrative and academic front. I also extend my thanks to Dean Academics for uh, Directors, Head of Department and Faculty for helping the university for reaching to its goal to achieve academic excellence. For our dear graduates, we are gathered here on this uh, August, August occasion of the third convocation ceremony to celebrate the gift of wisdom. This occasion is special in many ways it is special because graduates have degrees and diplomas conferred on them. University has also got in first two doctorate and 12 students are being awarded with the gold medals. It is often said that gratitude is the attitude that takes you to your altitude. And so for the graduates, those who are present online and those who could not make it to be with us today, I take this opportunity to thank all. I thank the parents for their trust in us. Thank you for trusting us by leaving your awards in our care. We also take this opportunity to extend our most sincere thanks to all our invited guests who have come or joined online. Thank you for being here today to share in our joy. The assistant control of examination, administrative staff, and supporting staff, the silent workers behind the scene deserves a special thank. I extend thanks to the coordinator and all committee members working day and night to make the ceremony success as the event of such magnitude does not come together overnight. The wheels have to start rolling once in advance. It requires meticulous planning and execution with an eye for detail. We know that we cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and the willingness they have shown to the take on tasks beyond their comfort zones. We want you to know that we are deeply appreciative of your support. And now to my fellow graduates, today is, the, today is your day when onwards your achievements will be recognized and you will achieve significant milestone in your life. Thank you one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request you all to please stand for the national anthem to pay homage to our motherland. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttkala Vanga Himachal Yamuna Ganga, Uchala Jaladhita Ranga, Tavashubha Name Jage, Tavashubha Ashish Mage, Gahe Tavajaya Gaga, Janagana Mangala Dayaka Jayahe, Pana 
जगत भाग्य विभाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Now I request the Chairman, Board of Governors, to declare the convocation as dissolved. I, on behalf of the Chancellor of the University, Sri Anil Vaniljee, declare that the convocation is dissolved. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I now request the Registrar to leave the retiring procession. I request the Vice Chancellor. members of the journal council members of board of governors with the members of academic council and the faculty members to join the retiring procession <laughs> 